You know, it was on this road that I had uh, my first experience with a friend of mine going down. We had met back at uh, Sacramento City College when I had my... Uh, ooh, and this is the bridge. This is the bridge where he fell. Bridge, river crossing, I don't know what to call it. But that lip sent him into that ditch upside down. Uh, but backstory, uh, he and I, he first met me at uh, junior college. I was still riding my uh, YZF600R. And he's a big dude like I am. He just saw that I was riding it. He's like, hey, well, how's that bike for a big guy? And I'm like, it's, it's okay. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a first bike. And I told him all about the Motorcycle Safety Foundation safety course and all that jazz. A couple of weeks later, he bought himself a Ninja 250. Perfect starter bike. You know, he asked if I wanted to go riding with him, but I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, we'll, we'll go riding sometime. But it just, it just never panned out. Like, I don't know, our, our schedules never meshed very well. So after about three months of riding, he put his Ninja 250 down. Uh, he lives out in the country and out here, in, in the country out here in the States, there's a lot of roads that have 90 degree turns in them. And those are usually, you know, not terribly hard to go around, but he slid and his bike slid for like 30 feet or something like that. And he was fine and his bike was fine. But it made me a little bit nervous. I'm like, well, do I really want to ride this with this guy? Uh, eight months after that, he wrecked again in the exact same type of corner. Only this time, there was somebody else there. He was making a right-hand turn around this thing, and he went wide into oncoming traffic and sideswiped a, uh, a pickup truck, and it ripped his bike in half. Like, no joke, the front wheel and the forks were one place and the rest of his bike was elsewhere. He was he was banged up a little bit, minor concussion. Uh, he was wearing a helmet but no other gear. Uh, he had almost no road rash. I think he just pow right into the freaking truck and fell over and uh, yeah they had him on observation for like two days and they'll let him, let him go. So a day after he gets out of the hospital he asks me for a recommendation for what kind of bike should I get next? I'm thinking to myself really hard, man, a Ninja 250 is too much for this cat. He really shouldn't be on a bike at all. Well, maybe a sport bike, a sport style bike isn't really working out for him. Maybe he's just not mature enough for it, you know? He's still really young. He was like 19 or 20 at the time. I, I made the suggestion, why don't you try a different type of bike, like a standard or a cruiser? So like, you know, uh, what are they, the Eliminator? A little 125 Eliminator, 200? Small, you know, a small little cruiser. Get used to that. Which would have been hilarious, because the dude is my size. He's, he's six foot five, and he was just beefy guy. So yeah, I recommended that. And it's all right, uh, I'll look into it. A week later, he rolls up on his new bike. So remember, Ninja 250 is too much for the guy. So he buys himself an FC1. Yeah, yeah, 1,000 cc's. Yep, yeah. 250 too much, quadruple it. You'll be good. And here's the part that really sucks, because I really like the bike. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> and uh, so I was really nervous at first, but I'm also like, oh, that's really cool, you know? I'm like, and so a month goes by, two months go by, and he's apparently been really good. He hasn't crashed it at all, because, you know, you're not supposed to, but I thought he was gonna. So he says, hey, we should go for a ride sometime. And uh, yeah, you can ride my bike and we, we can swap bikes. And I'm like, oh God, I don't want him on, on, on my Tiger, but I really want to ride an FC1. So he recommended this route and I'm like, well, maybe a bit rough, but sure, why not? So there's a bit of schlepping down freeways to get here. We have to go from like Sacramento to Vacaville. That's uh, nearest makes do no difference, 40 miles. And the whole way he was trying to ride chip style with me, you know, just side by side, handlebar to handlebar. I don't know, I'm not having any of that. I don't trust anyone to do that. I like slow down and then gun it and just hold to the center of the lane. And he was still following closer than I was comfortable with. What do you do? I mean, 
not like we have centers. It's not like I can say, hey, back off. And I don't know, I'm really, I have a problem with confrontation. I really do. I don't like doing it. It's a county maintained road. I'm turning around and I'm doing it. Knoxville public lands, yes. Yeah, the story about that wreck's gonna have to wait. So the whole ride up, he was riding next to me, chip style, and I don't trust anyone to do that, let alone a guy who's wrecked twice and decided that the bike was not powerful enough. So we finally get out to the twisty bits, uh, and I let him lead for the first part. He's just like, boom, taking off, and he's going way faster than I feel comfortable going. I catch up to him at a corner, uh, not a corner, uh, a junction, an intersection. When we go right or left, he didn't know which way to go because, you know, of course not, because he picked the route. So that was that was to get onto uh, this road, Knoxville Barry uh, so we And he had me lead. And so this is a really ruddy road, as you can see. It's not very well maintained. And that's that's fine for me. I've got a, a whole mess of suspension travel. This is, this is the kind of riding that the bike was pretty well designed for. That FC1 was not. I could see him in my rearview mirrors just bouncing around. And he's still following way closer than I want. As in, if he were to veer off, he would probably click clip my rear wheel. I, I don't know, he was he was really crowding me. And so I'd slow way down for these straight bits. And he'd probably be right here. Just right here. And then, oh, corner. And then I'd slow right back down. You know, it was that way the whole time. Only it kept getting faster and faster. I, I think he thought I was egging him on, like, come on, let, let's flip and play, dude. And, and then finally we came up to that little bridge and I'd been down this road. I knew that that little lip on that bridge was there. And I go right over it. I stand up and I'm all ba bonk and no problem. And I just go around. And then I'm looking in my rearview mirrors for him to come around the following left hand bend and just, there's nobody coming around and I'm like son of a bitch I turn around sure as shit his bike is upside down in the ditch it's turned off I don't know if it was his volition or the bike just saying yeah I don't have any fuel you're not he's standing all right first thing I do is I you know go over you okay okay yeah and I see that he's bleeding a little bit Bleeding's not quite right. You know that, that really mild kind of road rash where it's all scrapey and red and then like one or two little droplets of blood form? Yeah, that. That's what he had. So I get the bike right side up. I turn the key into the off position. And then I go over to my bike and I grab my first aid kit and I get him a little gauze. A little Neosporin for his ouchie. And so yeah, we're all settled, we're all cool. He's, he's a little shaken up, he's a little stirred. And I'm like, okay, who, who would you like me to call? I can call someone to come get you. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, we'll just we'll just ride to my uncle's house. What? Yeah, we'll just we'll just ride. Are you sure? Because I can just go get someone. And he's no, 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 no. Let's let's just ride to my uncle's house. So I'm like, all right, well you just go ahead and you know take point and go as fast as you'd like. Cause I'd prefer you to go slower than fast. So. I won't push you. I don't think I was going any faster than this. I might have been going slower. Yeah, we get going, and he just takes off like a bat out of hell. Just, no! I'm like, dude, screw it. And so I keep going this slow. As we get to his uncle's house, and we we sit for a few minutes, you know, he gives us some sodas. So we're sitting at his uncle's, and I'm I'm ready to leave. I want to go home. So, like, yeah, well, dude. Yeah, you go ahead and chill here, but I'm gonna step out. It's time for me to go home. It's like, yeah, I should go home too. Let's go together. And then like, no, no, no. Uh, instead of going straight to Sacramento, I have to first go. So, that is where the battery died. No joke. 
I have tried to tell this story four other times. So you know what? Instead of telling the story the fifth time, because this was the best one to come out anyway, here is the ending of that story from one of my earlier attempts. Did I forget to finish that story? I don't know. Um, if I did, uh, he wrecked, we went our separate ways, uh, because I lied and said I had to go to point B, when really I had to be at point A. We both had to go to point A, but I told him to get to point A, first I, I had to go to point B, because I didn't want to be next to him anymore, because I didn't want to be responsible for killing him, and I didn't want him to kill me. And, uh, then... We never rode again, because he went to a different school than I did. Uh, yeah, he, he texted me one time, uh, but I never texted back, because I, uh, very chicken. I'm a very chicken person. I do not like confrontation. Uh, and so I never talked to him again. He's just no longer a part of my life. He's gone. He's gone forever. So he... That'd be great if he saw this video and it's like... Damn, dude. That's pretty harsh. Because if it were him, he was there.